Hey, what's up? Kung Pao chicken is easily in my top three favorite takeout Chinese food dishes of all time. And I finally figured out how to make a delicious version of it at home. It only takes about 20 minutes and no, you definitely don't need a giant seasoned wok to make it happen. To get started, I'm gonna need some chicken. This is one pound or a rough half kilo of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I'm using thighs here because they require almost no prep, they taste very good, and they're nearly impossible to overcook. To get these ready for the pan, we're gonna cut them crosswise three times and then come back and dice that into roughly one inch size pieces. No need for perfection here either. In most Chinese restaurants, they're just cleavering their way through probably like 100 pounds of chicken meat per day, and the size usually ends up being pretty random. That looks good. Now I'm gonna move these over to a little baby sheet tray, set them off to the side, and now I'm gonna get the rice rolling for this dish. For that, I'm gonna grab my beloved $20 rice cooker and the rice I'm using today is a standard long grain rice and I'm pouring about 300 grams of that into a strainer so that I can rinse off the excessive starch. For most imported long grain rices like basmati or jasmine rice where the integrity of the individual grain is really highly valued, rinsing helps prevent that rice from becoming a gluey, sticky mess. But for most Asian rice or most domestic rice made here in the United States, rinsing is probably not necessary. For for example, I eat a lot of this medium grain Calrose rice because it's pleasantly starchy and I prefer to eat it unrinsed. All right, 300 grams of rinsed long grain rice goes into my rice cooker, followed by 420 grams of water, eight grams of salt, and I usually throw in a squeeze or two of neutral oil in there to keep the grains all lubed up. This is white rice, so I'll hit the button on my cooker and while that cooks, we will make Kung Pao. The cooking vessel that we're gonna be using is my largest nonstick pan. It's 14 inches and probably my favorite piece of cookware aside from the affordable mentioned budget rice cooker. 12 inch nonstick or a seasoned wok would also work here well and I'm preheating this pan over high heat. Once this pan is fully heated we're going to squeeze in a bunch of high smoke point cooking oil let's say 40 grams or two tablespoons worth then in goes 60 grams of roasted but unsalted peanuts. I'm going to fry these up for about 60 seconds or so or until they're nice and golden brown and starting to smell all delicious. Once these are all fried up and taken on some nice golden brown color like this we're going to take them off the heat and land them on a paper towel to drain off some of that oil. We're gonna get back to these in a second. The nonstick goes back over high heat and this time around I'm gonna add in a bit more oil than before. This time 60 grams or three tablespoons worth because stir frying actually needs a really good amount of oil to fully transfer the heat from the pan to the meat. Once the oil is just starting to smoke up I'm gonna add in my chicken. Again that's one pound or a rough half kilo of diced chicken thighs and once they're all in I'm gonna use a spatula to spread that out into an even layer and get as much chicken contact with the pan as possible. Next I'm gonna hit this chicken with a strong pinch of salt and then two to three really large pinches of black pepper. I want a ton of that black pepper heat in the background of this dish and then I'm going to hit it with a generous pinch of red chili flakes. Now I'm going to add a little bit more oil to this pan to make sure these thighs are sizzling up correctly. Then I'm not going to do anything for like a whole minute. I want a really hard sear on these thighs that's almost like a crust and for that we need to just let them sit there for a little while. I'm going to check in after about a minute or so to see if they're getting that crispy exterior that we're looking for and that looks great. So now we're going to give the pan a little toss toss to get some new areas of chicken in contact with the pan and then we're going to continue to saute this chicken for another whole minute without touching it. Two minutes into this stir fry now that chicken should be good and browned all over and the edges should be getting just a little bit crispy. The next thing in is going to be 15 grams of ginger and 10 grams of garlic. For the ginger I peeled a large knob of it and then microplaned it into a fine pulp and for the garlic I did the exact same thing. I would probably normally use a garlic press for this but the microplane was already dirty and so that garlic gets the rasp, dude. Up next is five grams of chili darbo followed by one gram of crushed Szechuan peppercorns. If you're not familiar, these are a Chinese spice that come from a little prickly shrub and they basically make your mouth tingle in a super weird way. It makes your tongue feel like it's hallucinating and then also kind of temporarily changes the way flavors taste. A little goes a very long way. So if you're new to it, I would dip your toe in the waters lightly at first. Otherwise you would risk ruining your dinner. I've definitely done that. Speaking of a little bit going a very long way, so does all 22 grams of this little energy bar from the sponsor of this video, Verb Energy. I tend to suffer pretty hard from an afternoon energy slump every day, right around 2.45, and one of these little bars is a great way to get a sustained boost of energy throughout the afternoon so that I can finish whatever I need to before it's dinner time. The dosage of caffeine here is equal to one shot of espresso, but, and this is very important for me, the caffeine comes from green tea, so instead of a light lightning bolt of dark jittery 
energy from a shot of coffee. You get something that's way more subtle with way less crash. Also, these bars come in a bunch of different flavors. I happen to be partial to this double chocolate one because I like to keep it kind of sinful for my caffeinated snacks. They're gluten-free, they're dairy-free, and vegan as well, so everybody can partake. And guess what? Pumpkin Spice Latte Verb Energy Bar as well? Wow. So to try Verb, click the link in my description and get a trial pack of four of Verb's most popular flavored bars just for the cost of shipping. That's only 95 cents. And then you get to see if these bars will get you over that afternoon hump like they do for me. Link is in the description. Thanks very much, Verb Energy. The Szechuan peppercorns are gonna get smashed under a heavy bottom pot so that they more evenly disperse throughout the dish and I don't accidentally pop into a whole one and ruin my tongue for like a half hour. If you guys are a little bit scared about the tongue acid trip thing, feel free to leave them out. I really like them, but in moderation for sure. Now I'm gonna stir everything to combine and then keep stirring constantly because the ginger, the garlic, and those arbo chilies can burn in a pan this hot pretty easily. After about 30, 40 seconds of stir frying, now I'm gonna add in 75 grams of red bell peppers and 75 grams of celery. We want large snappy vegetables in this stir fry, so I'm gonna cut this pepper into a three quarter inch size piece. That's gonna be big enough to be fried hard on the outside, but stay kind of snappy on the inside. And I did a very similar thing for the celery. I cut the stalk top to bottom in half and then came back and cut it on a bias into large three quarter inch size pieces like this. Now this celery is not gonna turn to mush when we cook it with everything else. And now we're gonna toss all these vegetables together and continue to stir fry this over high heat for another 45 to 60 seconds. Once the veggies have just started to lose that raw edge, in goes my sauce. And as you can see, that comes right up to a hard simmer in a really hot pan like this. To make this sauce, I combined 75 grams of soy sauce, 25 grams of dark brown sugar, 25 grams of Chinese black vinegar, this is a new ingredient for my pantry. It tastes kind of like it looks actually. It's savory, but dark and just a little bit sweet. It's a very cool ingredient, but if you can't get it, I'd say sub in rice vinegar. Behind that comes 25 grams of mirin, white wine if you don't have it, 20 grams of sesame oil, and then three grams of cornstarch. I'm gonna stir all that up. And if you have a few tiny clumps of cornstarch floating around like this, that's totally okay. The high heat is gonna melt those out in a second when this sauce hits the pan. Right away, that little bit of cornstarch is gonna thicken this sauce slightly and that moist heat's gonna also help finish cooking the vegetables. As that bubbles up and reduces, I'm gonna add in 75 grams of chopped scallions. As you can see, I've cut these into pretty large batons. That's gonna help them keep their texture after being cooked. Now, another stir up and toss, toss to get everything incorporated. And then in goes my fried peanuts from earlier. I'm gonna toss those until they're combined. And then I'm gonna take this whole thing off the heat. If you like your Kung Pao a little bit more saucy, now is where you would add in 25 grams of chicken stock or water will also work. Stir that in to combine. And if you like a tighter, drier, more more glazy Kung Pao, don't use any stock. I like mine with a little bit of sauciness to it because it helps saturate the rice. Of course, before I plate this up, I'm gonna give it a really quick taste for salt and overall pepperiness and spice. This needs just a little bit more salt to sharpen it up and now we're ready to plate. First thing goes down is a big dollop of steamed rice, then a bunch of Kung Pao on top of that. And there should be just a little bit of sauce in the pan to drizzle over the top as well. Take a look at this thing. This dish is very intense. It's hot from the chilies and the peppercorns. It's crunchy from all those peanuts. And and of course, that chicken is just a little bit crisp around the edges. But wait a second, hold on. Kung Pao chicken is delicious, but surely there's other proteins to which you could do the same thing. There's two variations I've made recently that thought were good enough to share, shrimp and tofu. There's just a few small tweaks to the process for each one to get them right. So let's start with the shrimp. Hot pan, oil goes in, then goes the peanuts. I'm gonna fry those until they're golden brown and aromatic, then I'm gonna set them aside to drain. Back over high heat in goes a bunch more oil, then one pound or about a half kilo of shrimp. Spread that out and fry hard on one side. A bunch of salt goes in, then a ton of black pepper and then a large dose of chili flakes as well. We're gonna give that a lively toss toss to get everything combined. And after maybe 40 seconds of cooking or so on very high heat, these shrimp are gonna be cooked about 75%. I'm gonna take them out of the pan and put them over with the peanuts while I finish cooking the rest of this dish. Now I'm gonna put the pan back on heat, more oil goes in, then goes the garlic, the ginger and the arbol chilies. Same amounts as before. I'm gonna stir fry that up until everything is starting to smell aromatic and just barely taking on some color. Then 75 grams of bell pepper, 75 five grams of celery, and now I'm gonna add in one gram of crushed Szechuan peppercorns, just like before. I'm gonna stir fry everything for another 60 seconds or so from here, or until these veggies are just starting
starting to soften up. Then in goes my sauce. Same for the chicken kung pao. Then the whole thing is going to get brought up to a simmer as it bubbles and starts to thicken. In goes 75 grams of scallions. And then we're going to add in all that shrimp and peanuts. I'll toss, toss to combine and then cook it for another 20 to 30 seconds or until that sauce is at the right texture and that shrimp is cooked all the way through. Taste it for seasoning. And I want to reiterate, this dish should be peppery as hell. It should be very in your face and pungent and make you sweat on the back of your neck just a little bit. That looks amazing. That shrimp kung pao. Now, what about tofu? The secret here is to use extra firm tofu and to stir fry it a lot longer than you would think. Extra firm tofu has a lot less residual water in it than say a soft or silken style tofu. And that makes this ideal for high heat oil based cooking. The water in a soft tofu would basically explode in a really hot oily pan like the one that we're cooking with today. Once this is all diced up into roughly one inch cubes, we're gonna repeat the process that we've seen twice now, but with a few tweaks. Oil goes in, then the peanuts, fry them till they're brown, move them to a towel. Reheat the pan with a generous amount of oil and then in goes the tofu. And a little bit more oil actually. This stuff is going to be cooking for like 12 to 15 minutes and it needs a decent amount. Then a strong pinch of salt goes over the whole lot and next I'm going to let this tofu sit here for two to three minutes to get some color and I'm going to stir every two to three minutes from that point on until it's closer and closer to this. This tofu is no longer flabby and bland. The outside is now savory and interesting and it no longer tastes like napkins. Now in goes a very generous pinch of black pepper, then some chili flake. I'll toss, toss that to combine. And now you know the drill, ginger, garlic, chilies, same quantities as before. I'll stir fry that up, bell peppers, then celery. Cook this stirring a bunch more for maybe a minute. And once the vegetables are just starting to get softened, in goes the sauce and then we're gonna reduce it till bubbly. In goes the scallions, cook those veggies for for a minute, the tofu is gonna to absorb some of that flavorful sauce. And oh yeah, make sure you add in the fried peanuts there at the end. And there we go, a very delicious way to eat tofu. Just fry it hard, you guys, and it actually will be something that you wanna eat. So whether you're kung paoing chicken or shrimp or bean curd, this is a really simple process that is gonna get you where you wanna go. The homemade version of this dish is fresher and sharper and all around just better than something from a strip mall. I really hope you guys give it a try soon. The full recipe and imperial measurements are in the description. Let's eat this thing.